Dysfunctional uterine bleeding, or DUB, is a common condition that affects many women throughout their reproductive years. It's a condition characterized by abnormal bleeding from the uterus that isn't caused by pregnancy, infection, trauma, or tumors. Instead, it's typically related to hormonal imbalances that disrupt the normal menstrual cycle. What makes this condition particularly challenging is that it can manifest in various ways. Some women experience extremely heavy periods, while others might have prolonged bleeding or bleeding between periods. So, it doesn't follow the regular pattern of menstruation. Unlike normal periods that typically occur every 21 to 35 days and last about 2 to 7 days with predictable flow, DUB is unpredictable and irregular. In terms of prevalence, DUB is actually quite common, affecting about 10 to 30% of women at some point during their reproductive years. It's especially prevalent during the beginning and end of reproductive life during adolescence when menstrual cycles are just becoming established, and during perimenopause when ovarian function begins to decline. While not typically dangerous, DUB can be inconvenient, uncomfortable, and in some cases, lead to anemia if bleeding is particularly heavy or prolonged. Types of Dysfunctional Uterine Bleeding DUB is generally classified based on whether ovulation is occurring normally or not. Number 1. An ovulatory DUB. An ovulatory DUB occurs when a woman is not ovulating or releasing an egg during her menstrual cycles. This is common in teenagers just starting their periods and women approaching menopause. This type is actually the most common type of DUB, accounting for about 80% of cases. In a normal ovulatory cycle, the first half or follicular phase is dominated by estrogen, which causes the uterine lining to grow and thicken. After ovulation, the second half, or luteal phase, is characterized by progesterone production from the corpus luteum, which is the remnant of the follicle that released the egg. This released progesterone stabilizes the uterine lining and prepares it for potential implantation. However, when ovulation doesn't occur, the corpus luteum never forms at the first place and progesterone is not produced. Without progesterone to stabilize the endometrium, the uterine lining continues to grow under the influence of estrogen. Eventually, this overgrown lining becomes unstable and begins to break down irregularly, leading to unpredictable bleeding that can be heavy and prolonged. Think of it like building a brick wall without mortar. The bricks, or endometrial cells, keep stacking up, but without the mortar or progesterone to hold them together, they eventually collapse in a disorganized way. Number 2. Ovulatory DUB Ovulatory DUB is less common, accounting for about 10 to 20% of DUB cases. In this type, ovulation is occurring normally, but abnormal bleeding still happens. Here, the hormonal patterns are generally normal, with proper estrogen in the follicular phase and progesterone in the luteal phase. However, the issue is with the response of the uterine tissue or with local factors in the uterus. This type typically presents with more predictable bleeding patterns than an ovulatory DUB. The timing of periods is often regular, every 21 to 35 days, but the bleeding may be excessively heavy or prolonged. Symptoms of Dysfunctional Uterine Bleeding The most obvious symptom of DUB is abnormal bleeding, but what counts as abnormal varies from woman to woman. Generally, bleeding is considered abnormal, if periods are excessively heavy. This can be as soaking through a pad or tampon every hour for several consecutive hours. Last longer than seven days, occur more frequently than every 21 days, or happen less frequently than every 35 days. Passing large blood clots, bigger than a quarter, is also considered abnormal. Bleeding between periods or after menopause always warrants investigation. Beyond the bleeding itself, Women with DUB often experience related symptoms. Fatigue is common, especially with heavy bleeding that can lead to anemia. This tiredness isn't just feeling a bit sleepy. It can be a profound exhaustion that interferes with daily activities. Menstrual cramps or pelvic pain often accompany abnormal bleeding, ranging from mild discomfort to severe pain that requires medication. Mood changes can occur due to hormonal fluctuations, including irritability, depression, or anxiety. Before we continue, if you have been finding the video helpful so far, 
hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this. Causes of Dysfunctional Uterine Bleeding The primary cause of DUB is hormonal imbalance, particularly involving estrogen and progesterone, which are the key hormones that regulate the menstrual cycle. These imbalances can disrupt the normal buildup and shedding of the uterine lining, leading to abnormal bleeding patterns. Anovulation, or the failure to ovulate, is a common underlying factor in many cases of DUB. When ovulation doesn't occur, the body doesn't produce progesterone as it normally would in the second half of the menstrual cycle. Without progesterone to stabilize the endometrium, the continued influence of estrogen can cause the uterine lining to grow excessively thick. Eventually, this overgrown lining begins to break down irregularly, resulting in unpredictable and often heavy bleeding. Hormonal imbalances can occur for various reasons. One very common cause is polycystic ovary syndrome, which is a condition characterized by hormone imbalances, irregular periods, and sometimes small cysts on the ovaries. Thyroid disorders can also disrupt the menstrual cycle, as the thyroid hormones interact with reproductive hormones. Both hypothyroidism, underactive thyroid, and hyperthyroidism, overactive thyroid, can contribute to abnormal uterine bleeding. Obesity can also play a role, as excess fat tissue produces extra estrogen that can throw off hormonal balance. Significant weight loss or eating disorders can likewise disrupt hormone production and lead to abnormal bleeding patterns. Certain medications can contribute to DUB as well. Hormonal contraceptives, especially in the first few months of use, can cause breakthrough bleeding. Blood thinners like warfarin can increase bleeding tendencies. Even some herbal supplements, particularly those that affect hormone levels, can potentially disrupt normal menstrual patterns. Diagnosis of Dysfunctional Uterine Bleeding Diagnosing DUB involves a process of ruling out other potential causes of abnormal bleeding. Be prepared to discuss your periods in detail, when they start, how long they last, how heavy they are, and any patterns you've noticed. Tracking your periods with a calendar or app before your appointment can be incredibly helpful. A physical examination will likely include a pelvic exam to check for any visible abnormalities of the cervix or vagina. Your doctor may also perform a bimanual examination, using fingers to feel the uterus and ovaries for any unusual masses or tenderness. Laboratory tests are important for ruling out various causes of abnormal bleeding. A complete blood count can check for anemia resulting from blood loss. Pregnancy tests are routine, as pregnancy complications can cause abnormal bleeding. Thyroid function tests help rule out thyroid disorders, while hormone level tests may check for issues like PCOS or premature ovarian failure. Imaging studies often play a crucial role in diagnosis. A pelvic ultrasound can visualize the uterus and ovaries, potentially revealing structural abnormalities like fibroids or polyps. Saline infusion sonography involves injecting salt water into the uterus during an ultrasound to get a clearer picture of the uterine cavity. In some cases, more advanced imaging like MRI might be necessary. Treatment for dysfunctional uterine bleeding. Treatment for DUB depends on several factors, including the underlying cause, the severity of symptoms, your age, and whether you want to preserve fertility. Here are the main treatment approaches. Number one, hormonal treatments. Hormonal methods are often the first-line treatment for DUB. Combined hormonal contraceptives, containing estrogen and progestin, can regulate the menstrual cycle and reduce bleeding. These come in various forms, including pills, patches, and vaginal rings. They work by providing consistent hormone levels that prevent the overgrowth of the endometrium. For women who can't take estrogen, progestin-only options like the mini-pill, Depo-Provera injections, or the hormonal IUD. Marina may be recommended. The hormonal IUD is particularly effective, often reducing menstrual flow by 90% or even eliminating periods altogether after several months of use. It releases a small amount of progestin directly into the uterine cavity, thinning the endometrium while having minimal systemic effects. Number two, non-hormonal medications. For women who prefer to avoid hormonal treatments or have contraindications to them, several non-hormonal options exist. 
Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen not only help with pain, but can actually reduce menstrual flow by 20 to 40% by affecting prostaglandins, which are chemicals involved in pain and inflammation. Tranexamic acid, or Listeta, is another option that works by helping blood clot, thereby reducing bleeding. It's taken only during menstruation and can reduce blood loss by up to 50%. Number 3. Surgical Interventions In cases where other treatments are not effective, surgical options may be considered. Endometrial ablation is a procedure that removes or destroys the uterine lining to reduce or stop bleeding. It is often recommended for women who have completed childbearing and are looking for a long-term solution. Hysterectomy, the removal of the uterus, is a last resort for women with severe bleeding that does not respond to other treatments. This procedure permanently stops menstrual bleeding, but is only considered when all other options have failed. At the end, with proper diagnosis and treatment, most women with dysfunctional uterine bleeding can find relief from their symptoms and regain control over their menstrual health. Now, we want to hear from you. Have you ever experienced irregular or heavy menstrual bleeding? What treatments or remedies have worked best for you? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We love to hear them. Thanks for watching.